just so you know, we're going to be recording uh, the webinar uh, so that those who weren't able to make uh, uh, this time um, for the online training will be able to listen to it at a later time. All right, just to give you a little background about the Active Transportation Alliance. So we uh, are a nonprofit based in, the, based in Chicago, and we serve the entire Chicagoland region. Our mission is to advocate for walking, biking, and public transit to create healthy, sustainable, and equitable communities. Uh, we were founded in 1985. We have about 7,000 members and 20,000 supporters throughout the region, and um, we've got 16 full-time staff. So just to give you a little bit of a background of what we've been up to with Bike Walk Every Town, uh, we had four regional summits that were um, in person in the North Shore, the West Suburbs, the Northwest Suburbs, and the South Suburbs in September and October. And then today we've got this live uh, online summit. Uh, we had at the, the four uh, in-person summits, we had 65 advocates attend from 44 cities and villages throughout the region. And this is a map we brought to those summits where people place stickers. Uh, on their community, so you can kind of see how uh, we were scattered around the region. So I'm going to hand it over to Jim, who's going to give you a little, little bit of a background about Bike Walk Every Town. Thanks, Maggie, and uh, welcome, everyone. I'm really glad to be able to share this exciting new program for you. So, um, you know, Active Transportation Alliance, since uh, our founding in 1985, uh, has always been active uh, throughout the region and has dedicated a lot of uh, our time and resources to advocacy in the suburbs. Um, and over that time, we've also seen, you know, the movement for better biking, walking, and public transit really grow. Uh, throughout the region um, and uh, really transform into a, uh, a great a great force for change in Northeast uh, Illinois. And really kind of reflecting that growth in the movement, um, we thought, uh, you know, it was, a good, it was a good time to look at kind of revisiting our way of, of doing business and our strategy and how we, we build change uh, in the suburbs and throughout the region. And uh, Bike Walk Every Town is our new program to do just that. And so we're really taking um, our uh, more than 30 years of organizational experience uh, advocating for better biking, walking, and transit in the suburbs and trying to turn that into um, an advocacy skills building curriculum and a leadership development program uh, that you are all now a part of. Um, and so there are a few kind of key aspects of Bike Walk Every Town. Um, Maggie mentioned you know, the, the kickoff summits that we had recently, but that was really just the beginning. Um, and this, this webinar was really just, just the beginning of what we hope will be a, a really long and sustained effort of us working together. Um, but moving forward, we'll be working on um, you know, uh, skills building training with uh, all of you to help you uh, hone your skills and, and become a savvy advocate. Something that we'll be talking about more um, uh, tonight is kind of some of the nuts and bolts of, of thinking about pulling together a, a local advocacy campaign. We're also going to be providing uh, issue-based issue education through webinars like this one um, and you know, written resources to help uh, educate all of you about the key uh, policy items that we think uh, through our, our years of advocating in the suburbs are really essential to laying the groundwork for the types of transformative change uh, we all want to see in our communities. Another big goal for Bike Walk Every Town is to uh, really build and grow our network of local advocates, um, and you know the the um, in-person summits were just the one opportunity to to bring like-minded people who had a, an affinity for our issues together. Um, but we saw in those uh, in those summits um, just the power of being in the same room together, being able to learn from one another, and be inspired by each other's each other's work and dedication. Um, we're eager to continue to build off of uh, that networking that took place. Um, through setting up uh, regional listservs and creating other opportunities for people to meet and connect in person uh, and work across communities to make change happen. And then finally, the other, the other uh, aspect of Bike Walk Every Town is 
of you know the, the active trans staff and our advocacy team uh, here at, at our office. Uh, that is a, a resource that's available to you for for one-on-one -on -one coaching and professional advice to help you uh, figure out how to move uh, a local policy change or local project campaign forward based off of all of our years of experience. So uh, the goals, um, as I as I sort of mentioned at the, on the last slide, uh, for for this summit and on our our previous summits throughout the region, uh, is to you know first and foremost. Um, share with you guys a little bit about Bike Walk Every Town and, and how to get involved. Uh, as I mentioned, a big focus for today will be kind of walking through the, the campaign action plan uh, toolkit that we've developed that's available on our website, and we'll go over where you can access that shortly um, and to help you kind of create your own local Bike Walk Every Town campaign. Um, and finally, as I mentioned, uh, a, big, a big outcome of this moving forward, we hope, will be to really help connect uh, connect you and uh, each, each other to into a network of advocates throughout the region so we can work together not just on our local issues but on the regional state and federal level issues that we know all kind of add up to the change on the ground in our communities uh, in addition so here's a little snapshot of just some of the communities uh, that registered to participate uh, this evening um, you know, as we mentioned, we're really trying to build build a movement throughout the re region um, in each and every uh, each and every community. And so here you can see examples of uh, you know our bike walk every town uh, logos for for local campaigns that we can make available to you should you be interested. Um, we already know some some uh, some communities, some people who have participated in our in person summits are already taking these logos and making Facebook pages, putting them on business cards and other materials to help move their campaign forward. Um, and our hope is to really be able to show a united front um, across the region just to show uh, just how widespread support is for, for these issues that we all care about. All right, so uh, we wanted to uh, let you know that we have a few uh, materials and resources for you related to Bike Walk Every Town, and I before, just before uh, the 6.30 time, I sent you all um, an email with some links, and you can feel free to follow along, but um, you can also check it out after after this online training. But if you go to activetrans.org slash bikewalkeverytown, there are, there are a list of different resources that might be useful for, for you. One is under the campaign building worksheets which um, one of those resources is a campaign action planning worksheet, as well as the, the list of the policy assessment list that I sent you earlier as well. Uh, we have some PDFs on our Bike Walk Every Town policy platform, and then we have some tip sheets on how to build a campaign, and, and we have some case studies as well on different policy and plan ideas and then we have some additional resources that might be helpful to you as you're trying to advocate for better biking and walking in your community. Uh, so Jim is actually going to get an online poll set up because we just wanted to um, see who we have here today. Uh, he will um, one one second we're, we're going to try to get the poll up. Okay, so the, the poll should be open now, so feel free to go ahead and let us know how did you get to school growing up. And then once we, uh, we'll take about another 30 seconds or so, um, once we get uh, a good list of responses, and I'll go ahead and share that with folks. Okay, last chance to vote before I close this. All right. Oh, 
we had a good split of people walking to school and folks taking the the bus or or, or transit. And uh, apologies if folks were having trouble uh, voting. The poll is now closed, so you won't be able to vote now if you weren't able to before. But we got more coming. Okay, this next poll is asking, how long have you been advocating for biking and walking? Less than a year, one to four years, five to nine years, or more than 10 years? So the poll should be open now. You should be able to weigh in. We'll take another 30 seconds or so to give folks a chance. All right, speak now or forever hold your peace. All right, so yeah, it looks like we have a, a good mi a good mix of uh, some novice folks to some interim advocates and people who have been advocating for for five to nine years. No, no longtime veterans, so uh, no worries there. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll be here to support you every step of the way. So we're just going to switch back over to the presentation. All right, so uh, now we want to get into the Bike Walk Every Town policy platform. Uh, so just for a minute, there, there you are right now, uh, if you can see the PowerPoint. Uh, many of you may have some projects in mind, um, such as a new bike lane or a better trail or a connected trail or maybe better sidewalks or crosswalks. Uh, but we want to introduce you to some different uh, policy ideas because often uh, if you have the right policies in place, those projects that you're, you're dreaming of will be more likely to actually happen. So we have a policy platform uh, and on our website, again, there's, you can look at this uh, document later if you want, but it, gives a little bit of a summary of each of the, these. So I just want to briefly mention uh, each of these uh, ideas. And as Jim mentioned, we'll be having webinars in the future where, where we'll do deep dives into each of these. So first, uh, the idea of a complete streets policy, uh, which is uh, basically a policy a community can pass that says whenever a new road is built, or, or repaved or expanded, uh, the street needs to com be complete. So you should not only be designing the road for cars, but also bicyclists and pedestrians. So here's an example of what that might look like. This is an example from Urbana, Illinois, uh, where they have a complete streets policy. And when it was repaved, they uh, reconfigured the road so that there were bike lanes and a crosswalk and an island for pedestrians. Uh, here's a map of complete streets policies in our region, uh, and we'd love to see really every community in the Chicagoland uh, have a complete streets policy. So in addition to having a complete streets policy, it's helpful to have an active transportation plan where you, 
you essentially map out where you actually want the biking and walking infrastructure. So you're showing where should where should the network of bike lanes be, where should the trails be connecting, uh, where where are there sidewalk sidewalk gaps, and where where are they needed? So uh, here is a map of uh, where there are active transportation plans, as far as we know, in the region, and we recommend that active transportation plans uh, be updated every five years. So once you have a complete streets policy and an active transportation plan, then you need to start thinking about the remaining policy platform ideas, which one is funding. Uh, so often you'll hear perhaps your village or city say, well, there's no money for bike, bike pet improvements. But really, um, there is a lot of money out there, a lot of money, uh, millions of dollars get spent on road improvements, road in infrastructure, so it's an, import it's an important concept uh, to consider allocating some of that funding toward biking and walking. Uh, in Skokie, for example, they in their budget, they have a line item that dedicates $20,000 per year to complete streets policies and projects. Uh, implementation is another uh, important step. So you might have that policy and plan in, plan in place, but if your uh, village or city leaders, elected officials, staff aren't prioritizing uh, that infrastructure, it may not happen. So this is the idea of making sure bike ped projects are prioritized and keeping track of them. And then uh, we also recommend that communities have an advisory council, so a bicycle pedestrian advisory council. Uh, they can hold uh, staff and elected officials accountable, uh, and they, they can actually be very involved in programming work and, and planning work. Arlington Heights, for example, has a very active advisory council that was very involved in a bike and pedestrian plan that they just, uh, that was just approved uh, this fall. Uh, we also uh, have on this list a Vision Zero plan, which this is an idea of traffic fatalities should should be at zero, and th this is a, a concept that came from Europe, but it's uh, been gaining momentum in the U.S. There are about 25 cities in the United States that have a Vision Zero policy or plan, so eliminating traffic fatalities. Uh, there are no suburban communities that have a Vision Zero plan yet, but perhaps your community might be interested in being uh, one of the first. And then finally, we have an idea of having a community adopt a resolution. So this is basically uh, asking a, having a community commit to pursuing appropriate policy goals. So it could be any of those blue items listed there on the screen. So it could be your community, um, you would like them to commit to adopting a complete streets policy and creating an active transportation plan and funding those projects. So now we're going to get into the active trans or action plan. Um, so this is the campaign action plan. There is a worksheet again in on our website, uh, which you can fill out after uh, this, this training, but we're going to go through a few different steps to help break down uh, how to put a campaign together. And really, as you're putting a campaign together, we just hope that this this framework will help you because sometimes the problem can seem a bit overwhelming, but this will give you some baby steps to, to work toward um, to make some big change happen. So uh, before going into that, uh, I think we have a couple slides. Just just a reminder that, you know, we, we all know that this is hard work uh, trying to improve biking and walking uh, in our communities, but but it's important to have a positive attitude, and it, it can make a difference. Um, and it's also important to uh, be persistent, don't give up. Uh, it takes some time. It can take years sometimes before um, 
before the biking and walking improvements that you're desiring uh, actually materialize, but uh, it's, it's, it's happened. And there are many examples around the suburbs of, you can see examples of bike lanes, uh, better pedestrian infrastructure, and those things would have never happened without a leader in place that had a vision and pushed it forward. So that's where you come in. Um, there are 284 communities um, in Chicagoland area, so that's a lot of communities, and that's why we're looking for advocates like you to uh, to to work in your community. You know your community better than anyone, and and try to push for some of these changes. So. Um, something I sent you before the, the summit was this policy assessment um, checklist, and this is helpful. Uh, it, if you haven't done it yet, that's okay, but it's helpful to just gather information about what's going on in your community so you know, like, does your community have a complete streets policy? Um, do they already have an active transportation plan? So. Um, you can find this on our website, as well as a sample letter that you could send to village staff to get more information about these different questions. So uh, just a brief overview, uh, our campaign action plan, we've got six steps mapped out for you, and we'll go over each of these and give you examples of each of these. Um, first, uh, we want to get you to define your goal, both a policy goal and a project goal. Um, think about who your target is, who are, who are your elected officials that can actually make some change happen. And then we'll, we'll go into more about how do, you, how do you gain support for your goal and how do you, how do you work with those elected officials um, to, to make some change happen. So uh, step one. Uh, just, just real quick, just since we, we went through those seven uh, different policy platform ideas, um, we're, we'd like to do a, a quick poll um, to see what, what you think might work uh, in your community. And Jim's going to do another poll. Um, so go ahead and vote, and we'd love to, love to see what you guys are thinking just initially. Polls open now. See some folks are are voting. There's no there's no winning. Also, this is a good time to let folks know um, if you have questions while we're going through any of this. There is a little chat box. Uh, any um, questions about the content, and we'll try to address those as we go throughout the the rest of the presentation. But of course, um, definitely available to help answer any questions uh, after the webinar as well. Okay, uh, any final votes? Otherwise, I'm going to close this off. So it looks like we had a, a pretty good spread. A couple folks interested in complete streets policies and active transportation plans. Funding, always a huge issue. Um, bike PED Advisory Council, one vote for that. Uh, and the model resolution also, also had someone interested. So a good spread, very similar to our in-person uh, our in-person uh, summits as well. All right, oh, one second, getting the PowerPoint back up. All right, it's back, uh, all right, so you know, after just thinking through what, what could potentially be a policy goal, um, now think about uh, what, what kind of projects would you like, like to see in your community? Would you like uh, a new protected bike lane? Would you like a connected trail network? Uh, ju just, you know, keep, keep thinking about this, and, and perhaps you can think about how that relates to the policy goal that you just chose. So in each of these steps, we just want to briefly go through uh, an example um, from a lovely place called Everytown, Illinois, a lovely fic fictional place. 
but so in every town they chose for their policy goals they wanted to create one of a uh, resolution the bike walk every town resolution and then they also want to create an active transportation plan and their priority project is they've got a trail going through their community except there's a two mile gap so they want to connect that so now we'll move on to step two so after we uh, define our goal. Um, the, the next step in our, our planning process is to figure out who has the power to, to make that, uh, to help us achieve that goal. Who's actually um, the one who decides uh, what gets done. And uh, as we mentioned, you know, there are 284 municipalities in the Chicago region. Each one has its own unique culture, certainly, but there are a lot of also a lot of different forms of government. Um, a lot of different uh, structures for how decisions get made. And so it's important for you to do your homework, um, and that's something that the assessment tool that Maggie mentioned can help you do, to really figure out who in your community is the uh, appropriate target for uh, whatever your policy or project goal might be. Um, but an important thing to keep in mind when we're thinking about our, our target is that we're thinking about actual human beings, so not just the entire city council or the government, but an actual person with a name, with a face. Uh, you know, they have a kid that goes to school with your kid or, um, you know, they go to church with your cousin. Uh, people who have their own lives, values, and interests and really kind of understanding um, who that person is and, and what, their, what their interests are is a really a key part of building a, a strategic campaign. And so it's really important to spend a lot of time identifying both the proper target and then doing some homework to try and figure out uh, more about them. And so in every town, uh, Illinois, uh, the most wonderful town in the state, uh, we our, our campaign targets are, are going to be uh, the village council member John Ivey and Mayor Mary Green. So people with names, uh, we know that they're the appropriate targets for the goals that we had set. Um, and we're, we're going to do everything that we can to influence them to give us what we want. Okay, so now for step three, uh, this is uh, where you're starting to think about who is your base? Who are your supporters in your community that can help you get this, get your goals and your projects moving? Uh, and we know that, you know, those of you who are on the call, those of you who are at the summits, you're at, you may be at different levels of your advocacy work. Some of you have been, you know, you're already involved in this. You're already, you know, you've got people in the community that are, that, that you know that are working toward the same goals. Some of you maybe, you know, you're, it's just you and you're just getting started. So um, we think this is a valuable step for everyone, no matter what stage you're at uh, in the process, because you can always find more people to support uh, your goals. So we recommend, you know, first think about who are, who are people you know, who are your friends, your family, your neighbors, your colleagues that you could tap into uh, and get them involved or at least share, share your ideas with them and see, see who's interested. Uh, and then thinking about uh, different organizations in your community as well as businesses that, uh, that you could approach that, that might have some interest uh, in, you know, that project that you're, you're thinking about. And then perhaps you can think of some other um, creative ideas. It's, a, it's definitely a, a, a good idea to sit down and brainstorm and uh, see, who, see who you can rope into your campaign. Um, something, something to consider is this exercise called power mapping, which is, you know, thinking about your decision maker, that, that target that Jim was uh, discussing, and thinking about who influences them, uh, thinking about their staff, their friends, any business connections they have, uh, the media, their donors, uh, so thinking about their inner circle, and then perhaps you might not know any of those people, but maybe you know people who know people uh, who can get you connected to, to that decision maker. So that, that's another, this is another way to brainstorm uh, uh, additional people who could be in your base. So 
once you've uh, come up with ideas of who, who you can reach out to, who you want to reach out to, then the next step is thinking about how do you engage those people? How do you um, get them activated in your policy and project goals? So uh, in, our, in that worksheet, the, the campaign action plan worksheet, we recommend choosing two uh, different ways to engage your base just to get started because you know you can do you could do everything but we don't want to overwhelm you and it's a good idea to just focus in on a couple things initially so a few ideas is one you could start hosting regular meetings you could choose a cafe you could choose someone's home it can be very simple uh, and maybe it's a monthly or a quarterly meeting just to gather people in your community so you can discuss uh, what you'd like to see improved. Uh, perhaps you could organize an event. You could organize a free bike ride, a group walk, uh, and it can be simple. An event doesn't have to cost any money. Um, or you could potentially get sponsors and make it more elaborate. But having an event related to biking and walking is a great way to find new people um, and engage your, your base. Uh, having a creating a flyer or a fact sheet can be a great way to educate uh, people, and it's something you could hand them as as maybe you're meeting new people. It's uh, that's that can be an effective way to spread the word about your ideas. Uh, so can a petition. Uh, people often get very very uh, very engaged uh, in a petition. On the right, that's a petition from McHenry County. Uh, to to uh, support adding a new side path uh, to connect some trails. So uh, in addition to a petition, you if you have uh, film skills, you can make a short video, uh, or you could create a presentation that you could bring to local businesses and organizations to to inform them about the idea the ideas that you have. Or perhaps there's another way that you can engage your base. Uh, we have in that. On our website, we also have some tip sheets, and there's more information about uh, choosing your base and engaging them. And again, going back to those webinars, we'll also have a separate webinar that focuses in on uh, building your base. So an example from every town, Illinois. Uh, so residents that they're going to reach out to, so they're going to look look towards their neighbors, their friends, parents at their child's school. They're going to look at local festivals and, and reach out to people there. They're going to go to a trail and actually try to speak to people that are using the trail. Um, organizations, they're going to reach out to parents, groups, hiking clubs, biking clubs, senior groups, chamber of commerce, local hospital. And for businesses, they're going to uh, try to talk to all of the the streets on or the shops on Main Street. Uh, reach out to some local nonprofits and the library. So, you know, those are just some examples, and uh, hopefully that'll trigger you to brainstorm other ideas that might work best in your community. And in Bike Walk Every Town or in Every Town, Illinois, they are going to hold monthly meetings at a local coffee shop and also. Uh, start a petition about that trail gap that they have in their community. Okay, so after we've thought about what our goal is, who our, our target is, and uh, what our base of support is that we can mobilize to influence that target, um, step four is really about taking a, a step back and doing a bit, bit of a reality check and also um, Making sure that we're we're le leaving no stone unturned in terms of some of our available resources or, or assets, and so assessing your capacity is important for a couple of reasons. Um, one is uh, you know being honest and, and setting setting some limits and expectation with your yourself and your your core team, whoever that might be, uh, just about um, your own ability to to give time and energy to the campaign. Uh, you know, we work with uh, advocates uh, throughout the throughout the region, throughout the city and suburbs, and um, it's always really heartbreaking. We see folks who are really energetic and excited about advocacy, and they overextend themselves and they get burned out, and they're not able to follow through 
on their goals. So, so you know, assessing your capacity is, is about um, self-care, uh, first and foremost. But it's also about taking a little bit of time to reflect um, at, you know, what are some other other assets, maybe other skills or knowledge that you have from perhaps other parts of your life, maybe from your, your professional life or, or elsewhere, other volunteer activities um, that you might be able to take advantage of in your campaign. And so not forgetting, um, you know, that we're, we're whole human beings with uh, lots of skills. Maybe you do a lot of writing in your, uh, in your line of work or you work in marketing. You know, is that something that you can take advantage of in the context of your, your uh, advocacy campaign. And so assessing your capacity, really asking the questions of, you know, what is our time availability? Um, what strengths do we bring to the table? Uh, what skills are we interested in, in developing? And um, what, are some, what are some needs that we might have that we can look to identify? So in every town, Illinois, uh, they're setting their availability at five hours per month um, to make sure that they're not overextending themselves, but still um, enough time to really get a lot of great work done. Uh, the strengths that they bring to the table, uh, passion, that commitment to the issue, determination, they're not gonna, they're not gonna turn back in the face of uncertainty. Um, you know, deep knowledge of the, the trail system, they're experts on, on the issue and, and the uh, project that they're working on and some, some fluency and skill in the social media realm. Um, maybe they even know what Snapchat is and how that works, uh, which, which I do not. Uh, on the skill development side, they've identified, you know, bringing up their writing, um, writing skills, and also ability to expand their business network and contacts with the, with the local business community. Um, some needs that they've identified is actually help uh, spreading the word and, and getting the word out to uh, to the world, um, this is something uh, that uh, spreading the word in particular that uh, Active Trans can help you do. We've got uh, a network of of twenty thousand members and supporters throughout the region, um, not in each and every town, but in in quite a few. And we can you know do targeted communications um, using our d database to target specific communities. So please ask early and often if you are uh, moving forward in a campaign and you would like to get our help uh, connecting people to that campaign, we want to offer that to you. All right, so the next step is planning your tactics. So first thinking about how do you communicate with that base uh, that you brainstormed. So again, we recommend just starting with two uh, so you're not overwhelming yourself. Uh, some ideas is you could tap into tr traditional media, you could reach out to the local newspaper uh, and include a, ask them to include a story about, about your, your goals that you're, and about your campaign, um, maybe write a letter to the editor. You could tap into social media, so you could try Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and that, that can be a good way to to spread the word and keep your uh, your base updated. Collecting emails is always a good idea when you're meeting new people, uh, so you can keep in touch with them and let them know if there's, you know, any action they might help take to, you know, get that project or policy goal actually enacted. Uh, you could start sending out a regular newsletter, an e-newsletter. Uh, Active Trans, at Active Trans, we have a blog that um, we're happy if you're interested in writing a guest blog post uh, or you have a story that you'd, you'd like us to share in some way, you know, get in touch with me. We'll have our contact information at the end, uh, but we can definitely help uh, spread the word. And then another idea to communicate, you could hold a press conference or a town hall. And perhaps, again, you, you might have some other ideas. And we have some tip sheets uh, on our website, again, related to all of those uh, different communication ideas. So in addition to communi communicating to your base, uh, it's also worth thinking about how are, you go how are you going to engage your target or the decision makers. Uh, so some ideas here, uh, that petition uh, can be a really great way to uh, engage your target. And so can actually writing them, emailing them, or calling them. 
uh, it can make a big difference. Uh, often, you know, the people going to meetings or contacting the, their elected officials are, are you know, against um, some type of new change. But if you can get a group of people that say, hey, we, you know, we support this, this idea of having bike lanes and better sidewalks and making our community more livable, that can, that can go a long way. Uh, and also just meeting with them in person uh, and telling your story about why you think this is important can be very effective. Uh, and so can testi testifying before uh, your elected officials. So an example from every town, Illinois, uh, for communication, they are planning on collecting the names and emails of the people they run across and then inviting uh, residents to a Facebook page that they started. Uh, they are going to write a blog article that we'll post on our blog at Active Trans, and then they're going to also share that um, article with other local media. Uh, for engaging their target and their elected officials, they're going to write a campaign letter uh, about the need for an active transportation plan in their community. And that's, as Jim mentioned, that's something that uh, if you'd like help with um, sending out a campaign letter or a petition uh, to, to residents in your area and then delivering that to your elected officials, uh, let us know because we have a special software that can help with that. Uh, and then finally, in every town, they are going to schedule a meeting uh, with their elected official, with their target, about adopting the resolution. Great. So uh, step six is about kind of bringing all of the, the pieces together um, and creating your, your action plan benchmark. So really laying out the milestones along, uh, along your journey to help you, um, you know, stay on track, uh, celebrate the the interim successes on your way to, to ultimate victory, um, and also to help you, um, you know, evaluate how you're progressing and to to tweak uh, tweak things as you go along, and to make sure that you're not um, overcommitting yourself or, or setting yourself up to uh, to get burned out. So, uh, you know, benchmarks. Um, a good framework, which some people may have heard of before, is the, the SMART system for setting uh, benchmarks. So a, a good benchmark is, is a goal that's specific, uh, measurable, something that you can, you can count in some way or somehow capture, uh, ambitious, so you want to you wanna stretch, um, but also be realistic. So you know maybe 500 uh, petition signatures is, is a, an ambitious goal, but um, realistic, while well, 5,000 might be a bit hard to get to, um, and then time limited. So making sure that you're putting an actual um, time-bound element, a due date, a deadline, to make sure that you actually keep making progress. And so in uh, every town, Illinois, here's the uh, example of you know their their plan benchmarks. So in the short term, over the the next few weeks. Um, that are going to work on, you know, collecting 100 emails of supportive residents and businesses, and start a Facebook page within two months. So you can see that's really specific. Um, it's measurable. You'll know when you have 100 names and when you have a, a Facebook page. It's uh, it's ambitious, but something that they can still pull off. And there is uh, a time-bound element with that two-month deadline. Um, the medium term, so looking out, you know, uh, a few months down the road to six months down the road, uh, they're really hoping to begin holding monthly meetings with residents, um, writing a campaign letter, scheduling a meeting with a mayor uh, and village council member, and writing a blog about the initiative and the progress made in the last eight months. And finally, longer term, um, you know, eight months to a year plus out. Uh, they want to work with the village council to get their resolution passed within a year. So again, a um, a time-bound goal, which is really clear when it happens. Um, it's it's ambitious to try and get to get a uh, resolution passed within a year, but it's certainly something that can happen. It's realistic goal. Um, and they also want to organize a, a free family bike ride by next summer and involve at least two local businesses. So again, good spe good specificity there. Um, and good kind of time elements uh, where they're pushing themselves, but also not too hard. 
Um, and you can see uh, on this um, on this action uh, the action plan benchmark that are incorporating um, different elements from the the first five steps that we were talking about. So really thinking about uh, identifying their base and what their base building activities are, what those communication and targeting engagement activities might be, um, and then how to kind of pull those out into um, into a, uh, a series of milestones that can help them keep moving forward. So something that uh, we also want to be sure to talk about, um, as I mentioned, you know, a big goal of ours uh, with Bike Walk Every Town, um, obviously, you know, with our, our campaign action planning, we're talking about creating uh, local policy change. But in addition, um, you know, we really want to build the network of uh, committed advocates from across the region um, who are, uh, are dedicated and savvy and effective and able to work together, um, not just in our own communities, but on issues that cut across uh, communities. And so at each of our in-person uh, summits, we were asking everyone to share some of these regional priorities that they saw a need for um, in their part of the region. And you know, we heard a lot of common themes. We heard things like trail and side path connectivity, um, eliminating gaps and creating connections between municipalities is a really common problem. Uh, the image on the right is actually um, uh, an image from uh, our Suburban Bikeways for All report, which some folks may have seen, uh, that really lays out what's going to be the basis of a new regional campaign for us to identify priority gaps in the trail network and work to close those. So we were happy to hear a lot of people thought that gaps in the trail network was an important uh, regional priority because we're going to have a, a dedicated staff person um, who will be available to work with all of you on helping to make that stuff happen. Um, we also heard about improving access to some key destinations like forest preserves, um, transit, getting to and from metro stations is, is always a, a, big, a big issue, um, and job centers, realizing that uh, there are a lot of places uh, that are job centers that are not downtown Chicago uh, that often are not as well served um, by walking, biking, and transit. Uh, safe crossings over busy roads was a, another big theme that we heard. Uh, you know, there are a lot of large uh, arterial roadways that are just really stressful, whether you're on foot or on bike, whether you're waiting for the bus. Um, and that's something that's really common throughout our region um, that we're really eager to, to get to work on. Improving trail and route signage, just helping to navigate uh, between and among communities. Um, educational programming for drivers and bicyclists, something that a lot of folks brought up was it just seems like there's a lack of awareness of the basic rules of the road that we all learned uh, back in school. And you know, on this front, um, I, can, I can share that Active Trans, you know, this has been a long-term priority of us to look at ways to um, expand uh, education in our school system. So we're not just teaching uh, young people about how to drive, but teaching them uh, about all the mobility options that are available of them. And so expanding driver's ed uh, and physical education classes to include things uh, like biking and uh, pedestrian safety, uh, as well as you know how to, how to take advantage of the transit system. And so we're gonna be looking at opportunities um, to work with uh, the General Assembly to see if we can uh, get an opportunity to get uh, mobility